the graphic novel adaptation of Wings of Fire, book four, The Dark Secret, released yesterday, and my pre-ordered copy arrived last night. I wanted to do an unboxing video, but I just ripped the back box open and didn't even think. Sorry about that. So, instead of an unboxing video, I thought I'd do a little review of what I thought of the book. Disclaimer, I do read the real series, not just the graphic novels, so I already knew what the story was about. I'm only reviewing the things that were exclusive to the graphic novel. So, for example, the designs, layout, and differences from the real book. So, let's get into it. My video about the leaks got a lot, and I mean a lot, of views. 26,000 at the moment. That is mind-blowing. It got me where, to where I am today. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Anyways, this isn't about my fame, because I'm totally famous right now. 300 subscribers. Yeah, I'm joking. I'm not famous. But it's about the new graphic novel, so on to that. First, the cover. The cover was amazing. It looks way better on the actual copy than it did on screen. The prologue is actually the same as the real book, which is surprising. The first two books replaced the prologues with things that weren't explored in the real books. The first book replaced Hvider's death with Clay's hatching, and the second book replaced Webb's getting exiled from the Talons of Peace with Starflight and Tsunami reading The Missing Princess. The third book actually kept the original prologue, but changed it a lot. I must say the art has come a long way since the first book. You can really see how Mike Holmes improved in drawing these dragons. I wish they'd chosen a better artist because I don't think Mike Holmes had a lot of practice with drawing dragons, but he's definitely gotten better, so that gives us a credit. Next, let's talk about character design. I overall thought the character designs were really good. Most of my opinions haven't changed from my last video. If you haven't checked that out, I recommend doing so because I'm going to make a lot of references to that during this video. I just have a few I want to talk about. Fierce Teeth. At first, I thought her design looked more like a grumpy old man than a sassy teenage rebel, but when I saw it in the real book, I realized she looked a lot like I imagined. If it were up to me, I would have made her purple, but it's not up to me, I guess. Morrisier. I love this design. He looks exactly as he should. Big, powerful, cruel, and not as skinny as the others. I love how they made him display different emotions to show he's more than just a grump. For example, when Mastermind pointed out he didn't have any dragonets, you could see a bit of sadness in the expression when he remembered his lost egg. That really worked well. Marcier's design is probably my favorite. Next, greatness. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I'm gonna say, you know, she wasn't so much of a creepy Slenderman after all. Yeah, no, she's still a Slenderman. The only difference is that most of the other Nightwings look like Slenderman as well, so she wasn't the only one. I see what they were going for though, and it works. It does. Okay, Deathbringer. This one is going to be slightly more negative. You may have noticed that they changed his design a bit from the Hidden Kingdom. Not a lot, but just enough that I noticed something was different. I don't know, maybe I'm being a little nitpicky here, but I swear they made his snout longer. Maybe it's just because he doesn't have the bluish tint in his scales anymore, which was his defining trait, I think. It's pretty difficult to make the Nightwings look unique though, so I'll cut them some snack slack. Let's move on to the layout. I didn't notice any differences from the real book, besides that when Starflight visited Kinkachu, he didn't go into her dream at all. In the real book, she has a nightmare about Grandeur's venom hitting her, and she falls to her death. Then she stops dreaming, and he sees his friends. But in the graphic novel, they completely cut the dream out. Not an issue with me, though. That was pretty much the only difference with the real book, besides some quote changes to shorten the scenes and things like that. Then again, I haven't read this book in a long time, so maybe I would miss some. I was sort of disappointed with Starflight's blinding. It didn't show the lava hitting him at all, it just... He stared at the lava, Clay grabs him, and he's blind. We know he wasn't blinded by the brightness of the lava, everyone, considering everyone else looked at the lava and was perfectly fine. And he was described with burn scars over his eyes and across his body in Book 5. I just think they could have made it more obvious how he was blinded. Overall, this was a great adaptation of The Dark Secret. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Well, that's all I have to say. Have a nice day, everyone, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Hey, let me know what else you'd like me to make a video on in the comments. Feel free to ship war. Um, Sunny Flight versus Star Speaker versus Sunny Speaker. Bye.